how did Hawaii become part of the United States? Uh, it hasn't yet. We have another call waiting. Hello. Could I? Okay. Uh, Go ahead. What's your question, please? Uh, my question concerns, you know, you claim it on the white man about on how uh, we came over and take your land. I don't understand when the Japanese are coming over and they're buying it, and that's okay. I, I don't I don't see see what this is about, about the Howleys coming over. You come over to our country and, and buy up our land, too. You know, it works both ways. I, I, don't, I don't see how you can have these rallies and everything against the white man. This is America, you know. I Let mean, me just say something to this call. This is not America. This is Polynesia. Our country was stolen. That's one of your problems. You're ignorant, woefully ignorant. Um, I do. I am, I am very active against Japanese ownership of our land. I have testified repeatedly at various commissions and at, at the legislature in opposition to any foreigner owning Hawaiian land. But you, caller, need to learn about Hawaiian history and about where you are. And that attitude that you have is the same attitude that Joey Carter has. You think you are in America. You are not in America. You are in a colony that is in Polynesia that was forcibly taken, just as I might add, all of Eastern Europe was forcibly taken by the Soviet Union, which Americans think is a very, very bad place. The bad, bad Soviet Union. Well, the bad, bad United States of America took Puerto Rico, it took Alaska, it stole Indian land, it took Hawaii, it took Guam, it took Micronesia, Balao, and you had better learn that history because you are the recipient of an imperialist tradition. It's 1794. For the last four years, Kamehameha has been building his great fleet and amassing muskets through trade with western ships. With his power ascendant, he now faces not just the king of Maui, but an alliance of all the other islands. Already, this alliance has tried to depose him with an invasion, but he met their fleet of cannon-armed war canoes with his own, defeating them in a fierce naval engagement off the coast northwest of Hawaii. Finally, the moment arrived. Two western merchantmen brought him vital intelligence. The old king of Maui was dead. His son, Kalani Kupule, now ruled from Oahu. This was the same man that Kamehameha had defeated in his first attempt to conquer Maui, and now his position was even less secure. His forces were reduced from warring with his relatives, and he feared Kamehameha's naval power so much that he boarded the two western vessels and tried unsuccessfully to impress them into his own fleet. The time was right. Kamehameha made for Maui and Molokai, securing both islands in a series of brutal amphibious assaults before moving on to the enemy's base on Oahu. 600 war canoes bore down on Oahu's south shore, their sails rigged in the western style that could travel upwind. Under the guns of two western ships, one built with British aid, Kamehameha lands 16,000 Hawaiian warriors, and his troops sweep through Oahu, forcing Kalani Kapule's men out of their fortified temples. The Allied army broke, fleeing to make a last stand with a thousand-foot cliff at their backs. Kamehameha's warriors formed ranks and drove them over the side. With the conquest of Oahu complete, Kamehameha now ruled all the islands apart from Kauai and Nihau. During the 16th century, Lenoi Kamakakahiki, a Hawaiian ali'i, and Kamala Lawalu, an ali'i of the Maui, had numerous battles for possession of each other's island. It is said of the penultimate of these battles, when the Maui attacked the Hawaii, the numbers of warriors was so vast that as the first of the Maui war canoes were landing on Hawaii, the last of their canoes were just leaving Maui. Lenoi Kamakakahiki had become enraged with Kamala Lawalu during the course of this battle. The invading Maui had captured his leading general, gouged his eyes out, and then had spears run through his eye sockets. Lenoi Kamakakahiki vowed a bloody revenge. When Lenoi Kamakakahiki's army vanquished the Maui, he took Kamala Lawalu over to the Keaku Heiau and sacrificed him alive to celebrate the great victory. The method of sacrifice was slow and graphic. Kamala Lawalu was staked to the ground for several days, then taken to a nearby flat rock and butchered. The body was then towed to sea and fed to the sharks. Some versions of the folktale have Kamala Lawalu impaled on a pole for several days before being butchered on the flat rock. Hawaiian folk tales hold that Kamala Lawalu brought with him into battle two large, fierce war dogs. 
a white one, Kapapako, and a black one, Kawakahi Okoka. The dogs are said to have laid down and died on the spot of Kamala Lawalu's execution. Although buried beneath the Heiau Luakini platform, it is said that these dogs can still be seen roaming and heard howling in the night searching for their fallen master. By the way, this past advantage, which is often assumed to continue with the white man, actually goes all the way back to the beginning. The American Indians who were here first, right, had a huge advantage. We presume that they owned the whole country. Now, how do you, by the way, let's pause for a moment. How do you get to own a country? If, if you have Cain and Abel, and Abel is a shepherd, and Cain is a farmer, and Cain says, okay, I'm not going to put a fence around the whole world. I own it, because I'm the only guy here. You're a shepherd. And my descendants will now inherit the earth, and anybody who shows up is a usurper. Rousseau says that the first guy who puts up a fence and claims he owns something is a, is a con man. So the American Indians came. They happened to be first. They came in a bunch of tribes. The Navajos who got the land took it from the Hopi or the Pueblo. Their law of the jungle was conquest. That's how they got the land. There's a big fight about the Black Hills that I cover in the film. The, the, the Sioux who got the Black Hills took it from the Cheyenne. Sitting Bull requested this council. We await his words. Take your soldiers out of here. They scare the game away. Very well, sir. Tell me then, how far away should I take my men? You must take them out of our lands. What precisely are your lands? These are the lands where my people lived before you whites first came. I don't understand. We whites were not your first enemies. Why don't you demand back the land in Minnesota where the Chippewa and others forced you from years before? The Black Hills are sacred land given to my people by Wachantonka. Not very convenient to cloak your claims in spiritualism. And what would you say to the Mormons and others who believe that their God has given to them Indian lands in the West? I would say they should listen to Wachantonka. No matter what your legends say, you didn't sprout from the plains like the spring grasses, and you didn't coalesce out of the ether. You came out of the Minnesota woodlands, armed to the teeth, and set upon your fellow man. You massacred the Kiowa, the Omaha, the Ponca, the Oto, and the Pawnee without mercy, and yet you claim the Black Hills as a private preserve bequeathed to you by the Great Spirit. And who gave us the guns and powder to kill our enemies? And who traded weapons to the Chippewa and others who drove us from our home? Chief Sitting Bull, the proposition that you were a peaceable people before the appearance of the white man is the most fanciful legend of all. You were killing each other for hundreds of moons before the first white stepped foot on this continent. You conquered those tribes, lusting for their game and their lands, just as we have now conquered you for no less noble a cause. This is your story of my people. This is the truth, not legend. So when we say, oh, give us the land back, are you going to turn around and give it back to the Cheyenne? Oh, no. It's ours. Really? How come you own it forever now? So what I'm getting at here is history is very complicated. Aloha, Haumana. Aloha from the island of Hawaii. It's very hot here today. Vela Hawaii. I see you've picked kapu. We're here at a very, very sacred place, and that's why I'm whispering. We're here at Leke Leke. And I'm here with a very special guest, Antike Hau Abad, to talk to us about why this place is so special and what is kapu. Antike Hau, what is kapu? Kapu are a set of rules, laws that um, tell us how we should behave so that we can keep in place all those things that we hold dear, like our relationship to the aina, to this land, how we behave and take care of that relationship with our gods, how we honor them, and um, even our relationship with people that we most respect, like our ali'i. And why is this place so special and sacred? Because when I look around, look over here, boys and girls, when I look around, I see a lava field and a lot of rocks but I know there's more of a story there. So what is that story? 
When Kamehameha the Great died, there were two sets of chiefs, one that was led by Kekuo Kaleni, and they believed that these kapu, these rules, um, that had been in place for generations and generations, over a thousand years, they should remain in place. Wow. And then there were these other chiefs, led by Liho Liho, who felt that, no, things were changing. Lots of Westerners had already arrived, and that things were changing, and they needed to establish a new set of rules. And so they battled on this very spot to determine whether or not the couple would stay in place. Wow, Gail, this place is pretty amazing. But in the end, what happened? Kekuo Kalani and those on his side lost the battle that day. And 300 people who fought for what they believe in are um, now buried here in the platforms that we see. What about the couple? Did it survive? The whole system of couple, as we know of them, didn't. But lots of the um, aspects of couple are very much a part of how we take care of the environment today, our lands, the streams, our oceans. They all come from these notions that are part of the couple. Wow. And how we take care of our ivi kupuna right here, our, the bones of our ancestors, and that's all very much a part of the kapu. You know, we malama these places, we take care of them, we respect uh -huh. our yeah. ivi kupuna. And we want to invite the haumana to come and visit here at Leke Leke in Keoho in Hawaii. We thank Keoho for sharing with us, and we'll see you in the next section. Aloha. Uh -huh. A popular misconception is that the American missionaries overthrew the Hawaiian religious system. In fact, the kapu system was overthrown six months before the missionaries arrived. On October 3, 1819, Kamehameha II and the wives of Kamehameha the Great sat and ate together at a royal banquet. By doing so, they deliberately broke one of the paramount rules of the kapu system. This meant that the king no longer regarded the old religious system as valid. Furthermore, in support of the king's action, Heva Heva the high priest immediately burned the nearby temple, or Heiau. The king and the kahuna then ordered all the temples in Hawaii be desecrated and the images of the gods burned. Through a supernatural act of God, in one fell swoop, the religious political system was cast down by those rulers who benefited the most from that system. Hey, this is Ryan from Clover Store Media. It's the 30th of August, 2018. Um, enjoying beautiful paradise here in Hawaii and uh, enjoying uh, my new pup. Huh, what do you say, Mocha? He's a good boy. Uh, so, I've been going back and forth a little bit on the internet, as I do, um, and in person. I've had a couple of people that I've had this conversation with who are native Hawaiian. And, uh, you know, the word haole comes up a lot. It seems uh, to be racist to some and not racist to others. It depends on who you are and how it's being used, what context it's in. What are you doing, silly guy? Look at him. You're so silly. You're such a silly guy. You're just going to lay there? Anyway, so the, the word can be racist. I think it all just depends on how it's used. Come on, let's, let's go. Come on, you're so silly. And uh, there's a lot of resentment among native Hawaiians, which make up roughly 9% of the population here. Um, and, you know, I, I get their, their angst and their, their complaints. Like, it makes sense to me that, you know, this was native land for 900 years. When I say native, you know, I use that term pretty loosely. Um, you know, basically the way it goes is about 900 years ago, Tahitians came uh, from Tahiti to the Hawaiian Islands. And prior to that, um, they probably had a Southeast Asian ancestry, at least according to DNA and, and other research. But uh, so they're not necessarily any more native than anybody else born here. I mean, they came here and they, you know, set up a civilization. 
and um, they continued generationally for 900 years. And so uh, native, really, the word itself means, you know, the place where you are born. So I would not be native here, obviously. I was not born in Hawaii. Um, I was born in the United States, and Hawaii is a state. So in some essence, I'm Native American because I was born in America, and that's the only place I'm native to. I'm not native to Europe. I'm not native to South America. I'm not native to anywhere but North America, aka the USA. Um, you know, just look up the word native. So the uh, the thought that um, the Howley, aka white person, stole Hawaii is a valid point. But you know, if you look at uh, what happened in 900 years of Hawaiian history, Hawaiians took Hawaii islands from one another in brutal battles, in, you know, essence, conquest for land and resources of other islands. So one island, like Maui, would come over and wage war on Hawaii, and back and forth, and King Kamehameha um, went and conquered all of the islands, you know, with the uh, the blood of thousands and thousands of people, um, all in the name of conquest, all in the name of broadening borders and, and having access to more resources and becoming more powerful. This is, you know, the definition of conquest, right? And so, you know, when they are upset at white people, howlies, whatever, Japanese people, whoever they're mad at. Go ahead. I'm making that fucking dick. Mind your own fucking business. What, you're gonna hit me, bro? No, I'm not. I'll put my hands in my fucking pocket, cuz. I'll put my hands in my fucking pocket, cuz. What's up? Mind your own fucking business, dog. Eat your fucking food, dog. Sit down. We will. Eat your fucking food. We will. We Who cares, are. bro? This is Hawaii. We do whatever the fuck we want out here. Abuse dogs, hit women. That's all we do. What? You got something against that, dog? No, we're Go eating. Back to your fucking we don't have any eat. problems. Eat. Put your fucking phone down before I'll break your fucking phone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mind your own fucking business. Okay, we're done. We're you done. Know what I, you know what I don't like? Dumb white people like you guys. All right, I'm sorry. Fuck you guys. Because you guys fucking took this land from us. Fuck white people. Fuck white people. Got it, guys. Bro, fuck them. Don't let them fucking talk to you like that. These are fucking tourists. Fuck that. We fucking locals. Far to the people, motherfuckers. Fuck right. white people. Like fuck white people! Fuck Holly! They like take our okay, fucking land! Okay, sorry, no worries. We're just dog We're lovers. Dog fucking lovers. fucking doors. You like fucking tell this guy what to do. Are you video? I'm already videoing it if you want to call the police. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Fuck white people, they took our land! Did you think you should call the police? Yeah. I dare you fucking try to be a hero again. I dare you. I fucking dare you be a hero. I dare you be a fucking hero. Oh, you don't, right, you don't even know how much shit Hawaiians shit. Oh. Fuck holy people. Fuck white people. Fuck white people. For um, being in Hawaii, buying up Hawaii land, whatever, um, you know, the, the real sadness of it is is that most people here that are Howley, Japanese, white, whatever, you know, um, have no relationship with anybody who overthrew the Hawaiian government or the Kingdom of Hawaii or whatever um, 200 years ago or, you know, whatever it was now. Um, you know, very, very, very few people here have any relationship to that conquest whatsoever. Um, there are a lot of indigenous Hawaiians here, or uh, native Hawaiians, however you want to call them, that are descended of people who did participate in conquest and murder and, you know, stealing of land from one another. Um, so I feel less uh, convicted of being some sort of um, thief or... or uh, conquester or imposer, um, I mean, I paid for my property. I bought it. I own it. You know, I, I'm paying payments on it, but, you know, I'm not getting anything for free, and I'm not taking from anybody else. I'm not stealing. I'm not killing. I'm not beating people up. I'm not threatening. I'm not intimidating. 
you know, I work for what I have and it's not a lot but I bought it fair and square and I feel like those people who are upset about it have more to be upset about in their own ancestry than I do mine. You know, I've done my genealogy. I realize that some of my ancestors were basically slaves, you know, indentured servants. Um, they didn't kill anybody. I'd, I've looked at my history as far back as the 1200s. I can't find one person in my lineage who has killed anybody. Um, and that includes war, that includes whatever, you know, so I, I don't have that history of conquest or murder or war in my history. It's just not something that my family has participated in. So I don't, I don't feel bad. And I, I feel kind of upset that people would want me to. And it's bullshit.